Hello. Ooh, it's a little loud. Whoop, whoop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That looks really loud. Let me just fix this. That, yeah, I don't know what did that. I apologize, everyone. Woo. Okay, back to normal. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Welcome back. I hope this is actually playing. Um, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the 2016-2017 Collegiate Star League season. Uh, we're glad you're joining us for the first broadcast of the new season. I'm Cameron Davis, joined by Osso, Osto, to bring you an awesome week one matchup from up north, ULV and Montreal. What's up, Osto? How are we doing here? Hello? Did something go wrong? Am I missing my... Am I missing my co-caster? Yeah, just, okay, sorry, we seem to have some technical difficulties right now. Hello, hello, hello? Hello. Hey, there you are. Hey, is it working now? All yeah, right. you're working now. Hello, Osto, how are we doing here? Pretty good, excited to get into this match. Seems to be an exciting one. Yeah, um, so today we're going to have, as I mentioned before, ULV versus Montreal, both teams from Canada. Um... Uh, I haven't. I have no experience uh, seeing either of these teams before, but Montreal actually did go seven and zero last season. Um, actually, yeah. both but last two seasons, straight fall and spring, um, and only lost to SJSU in the finals of the uh, playoffs. And SJSU are no scrubs. Um, La Laval UVL. Are, or so ULV are actually a completely new team. This is the first time they've had a team compete in the CSL. So it's time to see what they are made of. Um, and looking for Montreal stats, this is not going to be an easy match for them. Uh, am I missing anything else? Anything else we need to say before we jump straight into this? I mean... Um... It's going to be a real test if uh, ULV can both compete up to Montreal's level and also just to see if Montreal can actually keep that form that they had in the finals of last season because if they made any roster changes or slacked off at all, then it might be a very difficult uh, match for them going forward. Yeah, that's true. Um, people may have graduated. I'm not actually entirely sure. Oh, God, are they just jumping straight into the game? Oh, boy, yes, they are. Never mind. I'm just gonna. I'm just going to go straight into this. Yeah, it looks like we got ULV here on the T side and Montreal starting on the CT side. Full, almost full armor on the CTs. Yeah, we just have that one utility player. It's pretty standard. Same with the with ULV. We got that one smoke on Sarpoon. Doesn't seem to have bought an upgraded pistol though. So he's going to keep the rest of his money in his pocket. Epsilon with two flash grenades. And they're actually going to have a double CT rush up. No, sorry. Single CT rush up mid. Though. Epsilon's going to find out. Get a headshot on Pidgey. Get some game rate on Matsum. Oh. He gets traded out one for one right now. But they know that the T's are stationed. Or at least some of them are stationed around double doors at long mid. And that's good. a lot of cat. A lot of cat uh, presence by the CT's. But that's going to prompt you if you just push down long mid. There's no one there right now to stop them. That smoke going to come in to block the cross. But three CT's up on cat. Get with the first go. Get a second one. On the flank, actually. And it's just two members of ULV left. Though, Dr. Miko getting three kills. Now making it a two on one. It is just Enfo left. Bomb plant is going to go down. Gets the headshot. One on one right now with the health advantage and armor advantage. But no kit. He's on the bomb, though. He's going to tap it. And he does not look the right way. Sarpoon takes him out. Gives the first... Round over to ULV, so definitely a good start from these newcomers. Yeah, what I really liked that they did that round on the Montreal side was they tried to get up on CT or tried to get up on CAT. They kept three players up there so that they could retake into the site and take the fight together. And it just looked like they missed a little bit of their shots, and that's really what lost them. It, but I really like the strats coming out from them there on the pistol round. Yeah, and going into round two, ULV are gonna mix it up, put some pressure on to B side. But this actually looks like Montreal. Get a first couple kills, but then we see Dr. Miko and Sub Neo 
Get some nice SMG spray down. Ooh, nade kills well. So it's three for three on both sides. Definitely a good save round. So, or sorry, uh, force up round from Montreal so far. Question is, can they take this and win the round? Because Yulvi are on the A site, getting the bomb plant. So this is going to be a difficult retake, Montreal. They do. They were able to pick up a, a, a UMP, but no armor and no grenades. While well, Sarpoon still has a smoke and an HE, but Sarpoon's engagement down long A. Both of them get those final two kills, giving the second round to ULV. I'm going to guess this is going to be a full save by Montreal next round. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't really know if um, with the UMP they should have been going for that take. And they knew that the other two, uh, they knew they didn't have kits. They knew none of their teammates had any kits they could grab. And honestly, I think if they just saved the UMP, saved the 5-7 head armor, they could have gone into this round and maybe picked an AK or two off the enemies and brought that into the buy round for them. But instead, they just go for that retake and it doesn't work out for them. Going into this round as well, they're going to just be sitting on pistols, just saving as much economy as they can to go into the buy round that's coming up next. Yeah. The T's are taking it slow. They got caught a little bit off guard by the CT rush last round. They, not, they don't want to make the same mistakes again. Could go either way this time around. A little bit of damage going on to Pidgey. Coming out from HHQ mid. And no, no, actually knows like these players are on double doors. So they peek out, he gets a nice headshot, gets one, picks up an AK for himself as well. And there is no other T there to trade that kill out. So that is just going to be a one for nothing. Easy done. Oh, but we do see Pidgey rushing in mid. Doesn't find anything with the Tech-9 around the corner though. And so he backs off. Going to prompt them to go into the B site. It is just NFO by himself. Gets taken out easily and cleanly. And so they're on the B site. But the bomb still has to cross from mid. Yasuo pushing through the smoke. Maybe able to catch it off guard. But, ooh. You know where he is. They're just going to hightail it away from him. And actually, Sub Neo is going to stick around. Make sure they get that final kill. But then Nono's right behind with the AK that was picked up previously. Bomb plant is just now going down. But are they expecting Sub Neo behind them? No, they are not. He gets two kills. Sarpoon gets the third. And only losing one player... Yulv take the third round. Again, I just don't really know why he's going for the like. I can understand going for the flank with the AK, but they knew they they didn't have a great shot at taking that round. It was a retake on B, and with no utility, no kits, no less. It's. I think he would have been much better just looking for exits, just saving that AK, bring it into this round, and then you know maybe being able to just get a little bit more utility on someone like HHQ, which has one of the ops, but no utility, and Yasuo with an op, but. No utility, no armor. It could have really done numbers for him, but they choose to go for a double op setup, no AK, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a task to get Montreal's first round here because ULV have shown that they are proficient with those rifles so far. But yeah, are and they fend up against these M4s on the CT side. Yeah, and this is a double op fourth round buy from Montreal. Hey, Mia. Sorry about that. No <laughs> issues. Um, yeah, that's really that's very risky. But Nono gets the first kill in pit. Easy falls away. That's the rest of the T's hanging around around ta Cat, except for where the bomb is behind Blue Box, stuck in the corner. And it seems that Nono knows exactly where he is. But that's the rest of the T's coming on Cat. One gets taken up by Yasuo. I'm missing all these kills. Oh wow. He also gets, gets a second as well, and then Epsilon and Yasuo finish with the last two. So that investment of the two of the double op round four does pay off. They don't lose a single member. I think what Montreal did really well, they've been doing really well for these first few rounds, even though they lost um the first three, is over in that long area, even when they were get even when they were getting the kills on the eco and pistol, um, they've been just baiting one of the teammates over towards corner or over towards pit. And that leaves it so that one of the teammates, who's either sitting in an off angle or sitting in pit or with an op, can just surprise well be. And once again, they're doing some more unorthodox tactics, but Pidgey gonna push through and get two kills right off the bat, opening up long for ULV to just storm their way in. Yasuo having to fall back into the CT area and smoke's raining out over the site. It's gonna be an ass, but Yasuo hits the shot through the smoke. Making it into a three versus three. But mm. all three counter terrorists stuck here down in the CT area. The bomb already up on the site. None of the CT is rotating around towards cap, but it looks like NFO is thinking about it. 
looks like he's going to decide to go for it. And at the same time, they're placing Sarpoon over towards Long and having Sub Neo waiting for the push from CT. So it's going to be a very difficult situation for Montreal to retake this. Yeah, it looks like they're all, at least two of them coming up from the same direction. Sub Neo is looking up. Ooh, Yasuo actually is able to take him out. He's peeking out again. They know that one last member. Oh, well, N NFO beats him to the punch. An easy defuse. Yeah, and honestly, Montreal's just showing how proficient they are with those ops, even in a mm -hmm. three versus three with, uh, I think it was both ops trapped in the CT area. Yeah, they both they're came from the same direction. Yeah, they're able to just push out and use their teamwork and just their raw aim to just pick them off one at a time. And ULV, it seemed like they had some really good crossfires going on, but at every turn, it looked like the players from ULV were forced into a one versus two with the two being on the side of Montreal, and that just lost them the retake. So good job, Montreal, that round. Yeah, this is going to force ULV to go into a light buy. Got two members of armor, one flash, and then upgraded pistols throughout. So maybe hoping to get a kill or two by HHQ. What should we call him? Gets the first kill. Yasuo misses two shots, though, onto Pidgey. But this should still be an easy route for Montreal to clean up and end up tying the first match of this season. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Get Easy nice takes out Pidgey. Sarpoon. 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 Sarpoon here. Chilling up around B. See if we can't find any CTs pushing out. But Montreal are going to play it slow. They're going to play it safe. They know that ULV are on save pistols right now. Don't necessarily know if they're upgraded or not. But they still want to keep as far away as possible. Keep their rifle advantage as great as possible over the pistols. With that um, damage drop off. And, and look at what they're doing again, Yasuo and Nono. They're setting up for one of those, like, kind of bait situations that I was talking about over in Long. Mm -hmm. Nono's sitting over here towards Elevator, and Yasuo just holding the angle to draw attention, but Nono's actually just going to prove there we go. a teammate at all. There and we go. And gets the final two all on his own. And, Girl, he, know, does get a... he did get flashed out there, so teamwork was still involved. Yeah, I didn't, didn't catch that, but I mean... It's just the team war from Montreal seems to just be trumping ULV. The pistol round and the subsequent rounds were pretty just aim reliant on ULV. They mm -hmm. Montreal just couldn't hit their shots on the pistol, and of course those those uh, follow up rounds are pretty difficult if you do lose the pistol. But ever since then, Montreal's been showing just a trump ULV in their teamwork in every situation. But yeah, and this is gonna be, like Yul gonna be a yeah ULV rushing straight on to Long. That Molly is gonna block them off. No damage has actually been dealt in that engagement though. There's going to be a crossfire coming out from Nono and Epsilon, as you mentioned. Montreal getting crossfire set up. HQ smoking off mid as well. But he is... Ooh, no, he gets the shot through the smoke! Gets the second one! I'm surprised he's able, even able to see them. This is going to be a 5-3 to three man advantage going up for Montreal. Smoke's going to come in. Epsilon forced back a little bit, but he actually turns away too early. But Dr. Miko does not get the kill. It's just two T's left down at long A. Montreal pretty much know where they are. That's gonna be HHQ boosted up on top to this on top of the site. This is the shot. But at least has the information that they are still down there. Gets the second second try. Misses the third though. Sarpoon takes him out. So then no no easily peeks over and finishes off the last remaining T. This is gonna be Montreal finally taking the lead. I say finally, it's only in the seventh round, but still. First time in the lead of this map. I mean, you talk about it being early in rounds, but I mean, once again, we just got to look at, they have a double op setup. They've had mm -hmm. a double op setup since round four. Mm -hmm. Not once have they been forced off this. And honestly, I think it shows the confidence of Montreal that so early on in the game, they're willing to just go for that double op and keep it. And obviously they're showing that it's really proving effective here. And once again, HHQ going to be forced into a situation where he can do a ton of work. Paris just start flooding out onto the site and subsequent shots nfo helping it out and matt does get one but epsilon gonna come in for the trade right at the end so another just phenomenal site hold and those ops are really just dominating the map right now yeah i mean ulv they had that was just armor tech nine they tried to rush down b it's just questionable that they decided to rush through the molly i get that they wanted to rush on the side as quickly as possible but when you see a molly right at your feet even if one player was already in it and had to keep moving forward give that guy up for dead and at least back off because that molly did most of the damage to them before the, re the remaining cts on the b site finished them off so i don't that shows lack of I don't, like, good shot calling, I feel, on ULV right now. 
they gotta think like um they haven't gone towards b that's at all this cool, entire actually. game they never even tried it so they mm -hmm. don't know the setup that's been shown from montreal over there they know the op plays mid so maybe they just wanted to get out onto the site before that op could rotate from mid over to b and it was just unfortunate that he happened to be playing b that round and they couldn't get by him. Maybe they just hoped it would be one rifle holding it until the mid player ooh, could rotate. Ooh, I'm going to cut you off here, though, because to... we do have NFO sneaking up behind you. Push through B once they saw that Matt, some d Matt got taken out. But unfortunately for him, the T's are rushing down mid. Sub Neo just actually loses the engagement to Epsilon, giving Epsilon his second kill of the round. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I think so I'm just slip holding that also. angle gets a pretty easy shot. Yeah, that 5-7. And now it is just... I'm missing all these kills. Now it's just Dr. Miko. Easy. I'm not going to say easy round because it wasn't like rifle versus rifle, but a very definitive, just controlled round by Montreal that time. They had... The thing is they didn't even have like crossfires or anything set up. Really, it was a mixture of one-on-one -on -one engagements. Um, but they were able to herd ULV exactly where they wanted to go. They had all their entrances covered... And so Montreal are doing a really good job reading this map. And so doesn't find anyone pushing right it. Because this is actually going to be the T's chilling at round B. Oh, well, Who gets a second kill. Well, no, Epsilon gets the second kill. Down into pit. I am keep trying to switch people that are about to die. So that was a big engagement that happened mid that I completely missed. Counter oh, <laughs> I keep switching the people right when they die. So, yeah, Montreal, mean, Montreal win another round. <laughs> You can just tell they're feeling really confident right now. They're starting just to, you know, disrespect ULV a little mm -hmm. bit. They're just playing off angles. They're pushing up. They're flanking. They're just trying to take full control over this map at the beginning of every round. And ULV just hasn't really been able to punish it. And if they don't start punishing it soon, we could very easily see a 12-3 half. They're going to be saving this round. But after that, they got to try to get these last four rounds on the board, make it a close half, and try to get off to a good start on CT side. Now... Falcon did, oh sorry, HHQ did just take out Matt, but I want to point out that Matt did get a nice headshot first, so that's some damage on HHQ they can use to take out that op and maybe save it, but that is if they get it. HHQ should be hearing these players down in lower tunnels. Actually, able to smoke his exit out. But no, is this sub Neo pushing through? He did, he actually gets a nice kill on Yasa with the Deagle spam. Don't try this at home, kids. Does not get the second kill. Is able to pick up an off though. Gets gets a kill with it before he falls to Epsilon. So unfortunately, I'm not able to save it. But this is going to prompt Pidgey. With getting a kill, pushing up Cat onto the A site. So we can easily get in a bomb plan right now. No one is there to contest it. Sarpoon arrives just in time to try and defend the post plant. So this is a, a success. Next, Already this is a successful eco round. Yeah, but Sarpoon, actually, if he went on that flank a little bit sooner, it doesn't look like he's gonna, which makes a lot of sense, but, you know, just that sort of thing where if he would've, if he would've just gone on that flank, went down into CT and got those two frags, that would've been incredible, but he's gonna get the two frags in the end anyway, and expensive round for Montreal, but not really gonna mean too much to them in the long run. I mean, they had four players all above 10k, one player at 16k, they're gonna be able to get the double op back out there very easily, and it's actually going to be Matt sitting up on the AWP, which I believe is the first time we've seen it all game. So, mm -hmm. going to have to see if he can contest the AWPs of Yasuo on HHQ. And he's going to take the fight in mid very early, but it does get smoked. So, a little bit of a delay there from him. Double smoke, Not actually. really going to be able to. Yeah. So, all but HHQ. <laughs> oh, I'm very lucky for Matt. He didn't decide to go to the left side of the <laughs> left side of T-spawn there. That would have been devastating for him. I'm afraid I missed what you were referring to. But uh, he pushed up onto Cat. Um, HHQ, you know, he's just trying to dominate the map. He pushed yeah. up onto Cat, took a very early peek into window, and couldn't really see anybody, but, uh, or into T-spawn, couldn't really see anybody, okay. but it's one of those situations uh, where it could have just devastated ULV. So, I just want to point out that Montreal have really good use of their grenades. They're putting them out right there. Oh! Whew! Yeah, so Takes that sub Neo, not even deciding to shoulder peek, just rushes straight out and gets killed by an op. So that's the first kill onto Montreal, and they know there's another player there into double doors. It's gonna put No No around the corner. Oh, and Sarpoon doesn't even fully check the corner. 
And that's gonna be the first ki that's gonna be one kill of the three that happened in quick succession around the map. Epsilon closes it out. Nine to three and Montreal look unstoppable. You gotta be thinking at this point, what can ULV do to try to just tear these rounds back into their favor? Because right now it just looks like they're just being shown complete and utter dominance from Montreal nine rounds in a row uncontested and I think honestly they just got to go for a site execute with all five. They tried it the one round in long but delayed way too long and Montreal was able to rotate in. They just got to go for a fast execute, try to get the early picks and it looks like that's what they're trying to do with the four players over in long, keeping some near to watch towards mid and looks like they might be trying to get out into this long area very fast this round. Mm -hmm. Taking quick control of as much of the size they can get. But Yasuo does take the first kill on her Sarpoon. Trade's happening two for two so far. And it is just HHQ left on the site by himself. Oh, missed the shot though. Single. Oh, Baby missed back and forth. Enivo coming up. And he has smoked off. Does he see Dr. Mako on the cross? HHQ actually on the site himself gets one more kill before he falls. Dr. Mako watching the flank. Gets one kill. Oh, turns around. And while Flash is still able to get the kill on NFO. Does not get the second spray down though. So it's one for one. Epsilon versus Pidgey. Pidgey is low, but he is on the bomb site with the bomb planted. That nade could do good damage though. It actually bounces off and does nothing. Epsilon finds it though. Lands a nice shot in the air. Putting Pidgey down to three health. But Pidgey oh. going around the boxes. Gets the headshot to take out Epsilon with three health left. Grabs the op. And saves for the next round. Putting them up only five rounds behind. But it's it's their first point in how many is it? Oh, well, nine rounds. Yeah, I mean, UOV has really got to try to just get these last two rounds. Make it so that if they get the pistol, they can easily tie it back up. But if it, if they lose this round, it's pretty much just an 11-4 to four half. And it looks like now Montreal wants to get a little bit more aggressive over towards Long. They only have one player that pushed up last time. And... Now mm -hmm. it looks like they just want to stick back to what was winning them the rounds prior, and if they can hit the shots that they had been, oh, and HHQ just barely missing two oh, shots. Oh, but Doctor peeking out right when HHQ swaps out of his scope, able to get the kill. So they take out one of the oppers, and and you know not to throw Yasuo under the bus. Yasuo's doing pretty good too. Oh, Doctor Mago getting a second kill as well, pushing out mid, taking it control. NFO peeking out, is he able to get behind the box? Doctor Mago did not spot him. And he's able to catch him while Dr. McCoe is actually quite far ahead of his team. Gets second spray down, but Sarpoon trades him out. And now, we've got Sarpoon pushing it onto the B side. All three of them are there, and it's up to the last two members of Montreal to try and retake this. No, no, may be running straight. Oh! Gets some good damage when Matt had a nade out, but didn't land the kill. Now they know where he is. Ooh, sub Neo. I believe he actually missed that because he tr made sure he didn't hit his friend. And that allows him to take out Matt, but... Sub Neo does end up getting the kill in the end. It is just Yasuo right now with an M4. With a close encounter engagement. But Sarpoon is watching the window. Able to take him out easily. Yeah, and that, that was just some good play from ULV. Just getting out mm -hmm. onto that site, getting the frags, trading the teammates, and just being able to execute that site very i'd like to say very well because they smoked off all the key places that people could come from and then they only had one or two spots to watch which was tunnels and window and the player that tried to come from both of those angles just got completely shut down okay so sarpoon with his auto sniper spam does land a little bit of damage on agq before he switches back to the ak uh, just something of note, but Sarpoon actually with the AK gets the first kill down mid on Yasuo and Matt suspects Epsilon's there and does get fought under two health, but gets the kill in the end. HHU though, trading out back on Sarpoon and NFO in B. So ULV are splitting up, they're actually taking these engagements one on one across the map and surprisingly this time around it does put them in the man advantage just barely because Matt is down to two health. So Neil though, ooh! It's legged actually by the by. Oh no! Wait, no, he was actually hit in the face with an M4. That wasn't an up there. And now it's just NFO though to retake this. No point saving. It is the last round of the half. And he has an M4. He has an HE grenade. Oh, it doesn't matter though because Matt is waiting in hiding with the two healthy. Is able to take get the last kill of the first half. But Montreal are still up nine to six. We'll say Montreal looking incredibly strong, but ULV, as we can see here, 
They were able to string the last couple of rounds at the end. I'm sure you all remember it happened about 20 seconds ago. Uh, so if they can keep this form up, it's possible they can overtake Montreal if they figure out Montreal's tendencies. But this is a new half, and so they may have completely new tendencies, completely new... I don't have another time. It's tendencies. So UOV really got those last three, last three rounds that I said they needed to get if they wanted to fight their way back into it, which I do think they have a really good shot at just fighting their way back in. They need this pistol because I feel that if Montreal gets the pistol, they can get those subsequent rounds. If they get onto the rifles first, I don't think I favor ULV at winning this map oh, because yeah. Montreal's just shown so much teamwork going into this mm -hmm. that if they execute a site, I think it'll be extremely difficult for ULV to do anything against it. So this pistol round's extremely crucial for them. So we have most Here of we... Montreal actually flashed out onto long A, but the lurk from Yasso, waiting to see if he catches anyone out. He actually is. About to, he sees these players, he, or sorry, hears them through the double doors. Oh, he's waiting and hiding. Actually gets the first kill onto Pidgey, swaps for USP. Gets a second one to Doctor, and a third! Takes some damage, has to fall away, but that it leaves Sarpoon by himself onto the B site. So one lone flanker basically demolishes entirety of ULV. Which issue is there for the backup as well. So the hat trick by Yasso. Gets the pistol around for Montreal, puts him up 10 to 6. Yeah, again, UOV gonna be in a tough situation here. Don't know if they they will choose to force up here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to just catch off anyone they can from Montreal. If they could rip this round back from them and make it a 10 7, I can see UOV finding their way back in, but if not, they really gotta get that crucial 12th round. I, It's gonna be a lot of work for them to fight their way back into this because. As you can see, even in that pistol round, Montreal just has so much aim power, raw aim power on each of their players, mm -hmm. that if any of them catches you off guard, they can just completely ruin whatever strategy you were trying to set up. I want to point out here, we do see Matt sneaking up with the CZ. Does not get the kill on NFO. NFO is smarter than that. So that's already going to be a man advantage for Montreal with this. I just want to say, though, do not discount the aimers that we have on ULV as well. That is the reason they got those first three rounds over Montreal before Montreal is able to get their rifles. This is gonna be the rest of Montreal actually streaming up Cat. Just some new actually trying to maybe catch someone behind. And that is the bomb. No, no, just around the corner. I don't know if it's there. Oh, Guz actually get the kill. Drops the bomb. They know where it is. Now it's up to this team to try and take advantage of this situation right now. Let's get a second kill. Drops it a second time. He does fall eventually, but this, that should have given his team enough time to rotate their pieces around. Rearrange where they're going to be hiding out. And Doctor actually does not get the kill. Pidgeys, they're amazed. Flashed out with the 5-7. It's up to him and his teammate. It is two people left on the team. Sarpino. He knows they're coming from Cat. Can he get... Gets the shot, actually. It's Pidgey as well. Back up one versus two right now. HXU is down the lane. Actually trying to get the bomb hit. No, he's just doing it to bait it out. Gets an SMG kill. Now it's just Sarpoon by himself. HXU pushes up. He easily takes him out. So... Yeah, very, very yeah. close around there from Montreal. That honestly should never have been that close. They yeah. Just, they rotated out of long and then nobody stayed back to watch it. I guess they just didn't... They just weren't thinking that UOV would... Uh, I guess they were thinking that ULV had to, was a little afraid of them at this point, that they mm -hmm. thought that their aim was so great that they didn't want to go for those flanks because they figured they'd just lose them. Yeah. But ULV goes for it, and it almost it almost takes a round off Montreal, and if a few engagements went a little bit differently, ULV could have totally taken that round off them. But that being said, it is going to be a good bit of money in the bank, so next round going to be a very comfortable buy for them, especially after the save. So mm -hmm. just going to be looking for a few extra kills this round. Yes, indeedy. Subnia, though, as we saw, already fell to NFO trying to push up Cat. He got some information, but I believe he only was able to see one person, so you could argue whether it was worth his death. Save round, though, so there's really no point in arguing whether death is worth it or not, because you're all probably going to die anyway. It's just going to be Dr. McCall. Oh, nope. <laughs> no, no, knows how to check his corners. Actually, Yasso... 
dinks him with his SMG. Pidgey though pushing up mid. Doesn't matter though because he also takes him out as well. Sarpoon though is able to trade it out. If you can pick up that SMG and run away with it, he may decide to keep it for the next round. I think he's just gonna try to look for some access with it. Exactly. Make a little yeah. bit of money off the Mac 10. Oh, that nade could if get a kill. Yep. Woo! If they can pick that op off of HHQ and bring that into the next round, that'd be incredible. But that might be a bit of a tall yeah. ask. And not gonna happen. Epsilon just gonna finish him off. So yeah, let's he... see what UOV is gonna bring into this round. They can buy an op. Sarpoon has the money to drop one comfortably. Mm -hmm. So will they be doing it? doesn't look like it so they're just gonna go for five rifles no no still sticking with the mac 10 so wonder if he is gonna be able to do anything with it. if he catches a few uh ct players off guard with that that's gonna be uh, a little bit demoralizing for the ulv boys and right now montreal just looking to go for a b-site hit early on and with only one player holding it right now it might be very difficult for pidgey to hold this yeah but if he keeps ducking to weave behind these boxes he can do a good point of damage, good decent damage, get one or two kills before he falls, which is exactly what a lone sight holder wants to do. But no, en no engagement, no sight take has happened just yet. I don't even think they've seen each other. And because of that HE we saw at mid, it's I'm unsure if Montreal saw who passed. You'll be there going to smoke off. Actually, the entrance into tunnels. So we'll see if they want to try and sneak through it. But Pidgey is on the way. No, they're actually going to boost over it. Pidgey does not see him. Yasuo gets the headshot. But the bomb still isn't on the site. And this gives Sarpoon time to rotate into window. He knows there's Yasuo on the site. He gets some good damage on it. But he decides to fall away and wait for his teammates. Pidgey doing a little bit of damage to him. The ball plant is now going down. Ooh, the flash and the fire finish off Sarpoon. HHU also watching for the flank. So this is exactly what I love. Just what I've been loving from Montreal so far is that w whatever they do, whether they're on CT holding the site or even on the, like taking a single site. Matt, actually, sorry, I'm gonna interrupt myself. Matt got a nice little kill there, but no, no, got stuck on the window. Fortunately, fortunately for him, he wasn't able to take it up, but Matt pushes through, gets one final kill before he falls, and it's just sub Neo by himself right now. Looks like he wants to save this M4, maybe go for a exit frag or two, but he actually may be caught out by Nono. No, he is able to get the kill, but they know where he is, and yeah, AJQ finishes him off. But this is what I'd like to see by Montreal. Whether the, even We saw this on the CT side when they were taking the entire map. They held both sites. They watched every single entrance that they could. And then when they take this site by themselves, they all know exactly where they need to go to make sure that they're not going to get surprised by any sort of flanks, any sort of you know, backstabs by ULV. Well, you gotta, you gotta think too. I mean, how long has Montreal been together? If ULV, this new team into the league, was just formed this year, right? Before, like maybe even just for this season, they probably don't have the teamwork and experience that Montreal has. And I think it really is showing that. Like on their executes, their players just aren't as uniform as Montreal's. They don't have the post plants down. And if they can't get something going in these last few rounds, it's looking like it could be a 16-6. Sub Neo does get a nice kill with with the uh why am I drawing a blank on that gun? P250. Thank you, Jesus. Also, why are we stuck on a dead body? Please don't do this to me. But yeah, ultimately this is Montreal anti-eco. Oh! Matt actually gets a second kill as well. Wow. Go a third! Whoo! For his team. So this is already a successful save round. And a two on two, they are with bomb control. They are definitely have a chance to win this. They're gonna have to get some nice headshots though. And try and keep it close with these pistols. It's just she was peeking around the corner with that off. If they peek them, they are absolutely dead. And Matt is getting a little restless here. No, that Molly is actually... No, it is going to hit him. Before so the BG-50 does get the kill, and it is just Pidgey with 20 health. He knows. Oh, yeah, there you go. It's with the second peak. Gets it. Second time's a charm. Yeah, I mean, for a second there, you thought that UOV was going to pull off the almost the impossible. But yeah. Montreal just not making any mistakes there in the two versus two, and... Still, it's a very good from uh, Matt to get those two frags, get himself a little bit extra money, and now it's going to be ULV on a double op setup for the first time, and 
if these ops can get themselves going, I can see ULV fighting their way back into this, but there's going to be a long road ahead. HHQ is by no means a bad offer, so if they take a fight against him, it's not going to be an easy one to win. Oh! Sub Neo through the smoke gets killed, and also Bonono does get a trade back as well. 4-4 four four right now, HHQ taking control of Pit, able to watch peek onto the site. Doesn't see anyone there, though. So new picks out, and he is able to take him out. HHQ showing off that op skills that we've come to appreciate him so much in this match. Four, why are we stuck on here? Come on. Okay, there we go. Four versus three. This is not looking good for ULV because they will not have enough to buy, do a full buy next round, and that's going to be match point if they lose this. So they really cannot lose this. They only have one kit, three members, one of them that have health. Sorpoon, though, sees, knows the members there, spams lower through the smoke, takes HHQ down to 56 health. But Epsilon pushing forward into mid. Lurking around, trying to split up ULV. But he is heard, though. Pidgey takes him out, but now they know where Pidgey is. Onto the B site. HHQ and Nono both getting kills for themselves. It is just Sarpoon right now. He's going to try and go for somewhat unexpected direction. There's only really two places to go into the B site from. And we're going to see... H oh, actually, not looking that way. Oh, Sarpoon gets one kill on Nono, but NFO takes him out. 15 to 6, Montreal on match point, and the money for ULV is pretty abysmal. Yeah, I think, honestly, what really lost ULV with that round was just the double op setup could have worked out, but it was just unfortunate that Montreal didn't really give them a situation to use it effectively. Mm -hmm. They were mainly over towards A, which really only brought, I believe it was Sub Neo's op into play, and with Matt, try Matt just had to try to find some way to make his op relevant, and unfortunately, he lost the fight. And after Montreal knew that they had players rotating over towards that A site, they just took it B and ULV with that one player against three just couldn't hold that site. So let's see if they can pull anything off this round. See if they can pull off a miracle, bring nine rounds onto the board and force it into overtime here. But I don't think it's looking likely so far. Yeah. Yasso and NFL Blue getting the kills with this. Neo pushes out with this from Maz. Gets a nice kill onto Epsilon. Tries to swap to the AK. That smoke was there. That would be really bad, but fortunately it was. There you go. Gets a second kill onto Nono. This is going to be Montreal pushing up Cat. Try and take the A site. Matt pushing. Oh, oh, what happened? There we go. Gets a nice headshot on HHQ actually with that. There we go. Finishes them off as well. So this is going to be three on two. This puts ULV in the lead with their sub. Peer, sub peer, sir, what's the word? Inferior, there we go. Firepower, but NFO and also have something to say for it. And it just leaves Matt by himself on the wrong side of the map as well. Fortunately for him, he's still at full health. Yasuo and NFO are both low. One at five, one at 51. So there is de definite a chance of him retaking this. Push through the smoke. Oh, but it doesn't matter because NFO is watching it. Try to surprise them, but they were not to be surprised. That's going to give the first, oh, nice case rewards. That's going to be the first game of Later. this season over to Montreal. Yeah, and honestly, I think that what uh, what really ended up losing ULV that game was just they didn't have as much teamwork as Montreal did. And I believe their firepower was pretty close. Like in some situations, you can really see some of the ULV players going off. But the Montreal players just seem to be so uniform, just knowing what the others are doing all the time. And are able to just pull it out and get a win in the end. Yeah. No, it was it was with almost surgical precision many times that we saw Montreal take their rounds. Definitely a, still a force to be reckoned with. Anyone that had doubts about this about uh, a new lineup, I'm not familiar with them, so I couldn't tell you if they did switch up players, but if anyone had doubts that with this new year was going to be a new Montreal don't worry, they still look very, very formidable. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining us on the on this Dust2 adventure that we had. Uh, as a reminder, my name is Cameron Davis, joined by Osto. And don't... I'm not going to say don't go anywhere because you still have a little bit of time, so you definitely go out and get dinner and stuff. But come back at 7 p.m. PT for our second match, which is... I don't actually know what the map what the match is. 
Um... I believe it's SJSU. There you go. Okay, I see it now. Yes, it's on your screen now. SJSU versus USC. And I'm actually really upset that I'm not casting this because I've cast these two teams play before and it's going to be one hell of a match. Seriously, go check it out. These are two of my favorite collegiate teams that I've experienced. So that's going to be hella exciting. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for us now, temporarily. Yeah. yeah, but before we go, we yes. want to uh, throw a big shout out to yes. Band Gaming. We actually have an ad to play for them. Yes. So if you guys just want to watch that real quick, huge shout out to them for funding the uh, Collegiate Star League this uh, this year because it's just such a huge opportunity for these teams to be able to go at it, to win that prize money, to fight alongside their fellow students and go out, go up against other schools to ring their school out victorious. Absolutely. So, yes, thank you all for joining us. Uh, be back here at how long do we have we'll two and a half you have two and a half hours. hours you have two and a half hours so definitely come back to that but that's it for the two of us at least you're gonna have two fresh new faces fresh new voices on that so see you next time ben sam and ken are on separate journeys to defeat the menacing vile dragon well, let's just say luck isn't on their side if only there was a way for them to find each other and band together well that's why there's band it's a mobile app that allows people to come together using common interests. With Band, you can find fellow gamers, chat, schedule gaming sessions, and conduct polls. Stage epic battles with friends while sharing videos and photos along the way. So try Band today. Band. Be together.